As we've already seen, Collingwood will start the grand final on Saturday as pretty strong favourites. Joining us tonight is their assistant coach, Nathan Buckley, who's at the AFL Coaches Award at Crown. Thanks for your time, Nathan. Mick Malthouse, named coach of the year tonight. No surprise at that. It is for me, mate, because he hasn't been announced yet. But, well, it's um... embargo. It was 8 o'clock, I think, was the embargo. So, you can actually, don't well, go and tell him, will you? He gave it all away. The whole family's there, and I think okay. all the grandkids are under the table as well. So, um, <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's got everyone there, and uh, fair reward uh, for his efforts. Uh, are you a bit envious? Not at all. Of uh, the other 14 clubs? No, of you not playing on Saturday. Oh, a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's been a couple of years now, but um, no, it's uh, well and truly been reconciled and um, fantastic to be a part of uh, one of the two clubs that are involved. Bucks, could the team be better placed? You've uh, had two finals victories and uh, you've done it pretty easily in both games. Yeah, it might seem that way. We've been able to play um, eight quarters of pretty good football in the finals and um, against two very good opponents. So. We've got a, another four in front of us against uh, St Kilda who have obviously played some fantastic football and uh, it's going to be a big challenge. They play a little differently to, uh, to the Bulldogs and to Geelong and uh, every opponent has their strengths and weaknesses and we've got to uh, earn it all over again on Saturday. Bucks, you're the, uh, the forward coach and you're in charge of the, the forward line that puts more pressure on opposition sides than anyone else in the competition. Last year it was St Kilda. Did you model any of the way you go about it on the Saints of 2009? Yeah, well, look, I think they, um, they did set the standard last year and um, I think the game evolves and, and generally sides will trend set about um, you know, different tactics and how things are done. Um, I'm not privy to exactly the tactics that St Kilda use, but um, obviously their, their full, full ground press has, uh, has worked for them over the last couple of years and, and we've really focused on our forward pressure uh, as a team. But it is just one part of, uh, of what makes us uh, successful at this point and uh, it's going to be a challenge to make sure we replicate. Nathan, you're the forward line coach at Collingwood and uh, your team has kicked uh, more points on average uh, for 20 years. So it's been a long time since a Collingwood forward line has functioned like this. Some of the names, they're just youngsters, you know, McCaffer and Sidebottom and Doors and Beams. Been in the system for only a couple of years. Uh, you must really enjoy working with this young talent. And I just want to know, what, what do you emphasise to these kids? What are the two or three things that you insist that they do? Well, I think every, every one of the forward players has, uh, has a role to play. Um, I insist that they know their role inside out and, and that they um, play that role to the best of their ability. I think um, that frees them up from, from any uh, grandiose... Uh, thoughts or, um, or expectations they really know that uh, it's nuts and bolts and, and that they can play their role on behalf of the team and I suppose when you've had the season we've had that that builds on itself so a McCaffrey side bottom of beams as you've mentioned uh, a young Chris Dawes or Travis Cloak um, playing their role or even an Alan Didak or uh, Dane Swan if he, if he uh, saunters down there they know exactly what's expected of them at all times and, and I think that uh, frees them up a little bit to, um, to just go and do their job and be a part of the, the machine. As you just said you've got some young'uns uh, in that team have they sought your advice given the fact you've played in a couple of grand finals have they been asking any pertinent questions this week? Look they've uh, the group's been really solid they've been able to um, to perform very well last week, uh, obviously, um, and it was quite relaxed during the week, quite relaxed in the rooms before the game, relaxed enough for me to be uh, worried about how relaxed it was, but uh, obviously uh, and evidently they, uh, they came out and performed well and, and that's the best preparation for them. Uh, they seem to um, be a very tight-knit group with a lot of belief and uh, yeah, the questions have come and they haven't been too frequent, but um, you do make sure and you keep your eye on as, a, as an assistant coach that, um, you know, that your division in particular uh, have got their, their eyes on, and their focus on the right thing, and um, I believe this group has. Bucks, you turned up to Brownlow Medal Night a number of times as favourite. Didn't win it before you eventually mm. did. Uh, it's a deflating feeling, isn't it? Uh, I know Dane Swan's got a lot to focus about with the grand final this week, but there has to be a sense for him. With all that build-up, all that ex expectation, absolute favourite, and then he doesn't win it. Have you had him uh, since uh, the Brownlow last night? 
Yeah, I spent the last 20 minutes sitting next to uh, Swanee because he's going to receive the, uh, and this might not be embargoed yet, uh, quarters, but he's going to receive the Coaches uh, Association Award and uh, that's voted on by the coaches and um, obviously those guys know exactly um, how important their, uh, their own players are and the 